Hello, and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. Every week, Talking Heads will bring you in-depth insights and analysis through the lens of sustainability on the topics that really matter to investors. In this episode, we'll be discussing thematics. I'm Daniel Morris, Chief Market Strategist, and I'm delighted to be joined by Guy Davis, Deputy Head of Investments. Welcome back, Guy, and thanks for joining me. Hi, Daniel. Hi, everyone. Hope you're well. And uh, it's lovely to be back. Thanks for having me, Daniel. It's been a long time. You haven't invited Indeed. me back for a long time. Indeed. <laughs> So we're going to think about thematics not only as a standalone investment, but also, I think, interestingly, in the context of a broad portfolio. And I think that's an appropriate perspective now, given the challenges that we know traditional 60-40 portfolios have faced this year. Uh, now, of course, one of the bedrocks of investing or portfolio construction uh, is diversification. Uh, and again, we haven't seen that to the degree we would have liked this year. And I think this highlights you know, why thematics uh, are particularly interesting as we look for, I guess, opportunities to have positive returns in portfolios as opposed to the negative re returns we've had uh, in several parts of the market. Uh, that said, we know it's not a completely smooth pass. Uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges that thematics have faced. And in particular, I'd like to address, I think, a, perhaps a, a belief that a lot of people have that thematics are really just a variation on growth stocks uh, and uh, address that and, and discuss maybe uh, that there's more to it than that. But let's step back a bit. And uh, Guy, maybe you can just explain what the idea of thematic investing means to you, uh, and then highlight some of the key themes you currently find interesting. Of course, it would be a pleasure, Daniel. Thank you. So first of all, I'd say that and note that thematic investing is nothing new. So I've been investing for almost 30 years. Not that obviously you'd notice that by looking at me, Daniel, but over 30 or almost 30 years. And the themes, um, themes have always played an important part and of running through our broad market portfolios. But it's only relatively recently, I think, that strategies with distinct themes have really been developed. For me, thematic investing is about focusing on one or more areas where it could be social, environmental or commercial needs create generational opportunities for market beating returns. And within our firm, as you know, they should chime with our three E's, so the environment, energy transition, and equality. And they need to fit with our macro view of the world. And we talk about this a lot, Daniel, and, and as do your podcasts, um, the long-term forces that shape markets and, and capital flows. And then when I look at sort of the interesting themes and the areas that we are looking at within our firm, you, know, you shouldn't expect to see significant change or churn in the themes, you know, given their longevity. You know, great themes are broad, deep, and long duration. So, you know, very good vehicles for investment. And examples, I guess, would include, um, you know, classic examples, technology, you know, from the internet of things to artificial intelligence through to the blockchain, which is super, super interesting, and has and will offer tremendous investment opportunities, impacting all parts of our daily lives and, and disrupting the, the established norms and processes, and both from a commercial and industrial perspective and so on and so forth. Uh, a second one, the carbon transition. Uh, similarly, food, water, and the environment. Wellness from healthcare, education, all the way through to the consumer, and with an emphasis on society and equality. And you know, given what we both do for a living, financials and fintech, and then there's mobility uh, and industrial technology. As we know, with opportunity comes risk or, or at least challenges. Uh, and I think it's safe to say that thematic investing has had a challenging year um, to some degree, along with, with most uh, asset classes. Uh, we think about tightening monetary policy, weakening growth, perhaps, if not probably, a recession in the U.S. and Europe next year. Uh, and again, the point that I raised in the intro that there at least is a decent correlation between thematic investing uh, and long horizon growth stocks. Uh, and we think about that in the context of rising interest rates. So, Guy, uh, how do you then think about thematics facing those challenges? It's, it's a terrific question, Daniel. Thanks. And 
I guess to begin with, I'd note that something that we, we've talked about a lot within our firm, and I know you do on the podcast, is that market sentiment is short term. And the overwhelming consensus towards equities and particularly some of the growth names, which are typically sort of characterized as being thematics, is overly bearish in my view. As a result, I think we have a fairly rare opportunity to incept or build positions. In my view, markets are offering a fantastic entry point for long-term investors. And again, we have lots of discussions internally about this. And for the listeners, you know, Daniel and I talk about this two or three times a week. Um, and he knows my views, my views very well. And we know that the majority of stock market returns over the long term are generated by a small minority of companies. We know that an overly short term market generates volatility, which periodically offers pretty compelling entry points. And we know that there's strong supports for these themes. So let's take climate change and the carbon transition as being a great example. You know, that's an example where public support, policy, innovation, technology are all aligned. So you know, these thematics, which run through our broad market portfolios as well, as I mentioned a second ago, in terms of how we um, define thematics, can disrupt, provide solutions um, to some of the most pressing uh, challenges that we face today. And incidentally, when growth is scarce, growth is valuable, and I would argue will be priced accordingly. In terms of challenges, multiple, I'd say, um, you know, it can feel very lonely when the market decides that you're wrong, and particularly when the market decides that you're wrong for longer periods of time. That said, we know the importance of long-term investing, to reiterate what I've you know been banging on about, and that's nowhere more pertinent than within thematic investing. A distinct theme, regardless of its importance and breadth, uh, inevitably narrows the investment universe. And the beta of the theme alone, which can be impacted by politics, regulation, or simply the macro environment, uh, so rates tightening, as you mentioned, Daniel, can create a significant performance differential relative to broad market benchmarks. And, you know, innovation in, within these themes occurs across the market cap range as well. So we need to be nimble and alive to liquidity and also alive to you know, money flows in and out of these strategies. So we remain super close to our clients and investors uh, on both the progress of the theme and on our performance around it. And also it, it's important to remember that it's, it's possible to allocate uh, across a range of themes. So, yeah, from a strategic asset allocation, not to just look at one individual theme, but to go across the board, or to invest in strategies that are designed to offer broader thematic exposure, or indeed to just broad market equity strategies or mixed strategies, or indeed fixed income strategies now, which have thematic elements to them. We've been talking at a very high level up to now, but I'm going to put you on the spot, Guy. Uh, where are you investing, and why don't you give us some of your personal top tips? Yeah, good question. Um, so I'm pretty much fully invested, and I'm adding to my positions. I think the scope, clearly the scope for equity prices to soften further. And again, Daniel, we, we've had this conversation. And to some degree, I'm, I'm a bit of an outlier within these discussions. But with a longer term time horizon, and again, you know, saying the same thing over, but I see a real asymmetry in outcomes. So the upside is significantly greater than the downside. And with long term support from a number of catalysts, even into the year end, so I can point to sort of five or six catalysts that, that we might see over the next sort of two, three months. So I'm relatively constructive on markets, I'm fully invested, and I'm adding to that. And as to where, uh, China, and I think when we last spoke, I talked about China as being uh, an interesting investment opportunity and thematics. And within thematics, energy transition is the theme of our lives. Healthcare, which offers great value. And actually, that's an interesting thematic to your, uh, and to your point and question on, on growth stocks. Healthcare is, uh, offers a fantastic value opportunity for great growth companies. So again, there's another sort of slight nuance there. And then technology, which I think offers solutions to many of today's challenges. And you know, another thing that I would note, which 
fits into the macro discussion as well. Each of these thematics is by definition deflationary in nature. So look, it's a personal view and there's a very healthy debate in our firm that we're both part of, as, as you know. But you know, if 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 I had a drum, um, I would be I might not be banging it right now, but I'd be certainly getting it out and, and getting ready to bang it. So that's uh, an image you might find hard to forget. <laughs> well, on that note, then let me summarize uh, some of the key points. And I really like the way you characterize thematics as investments that offer generational opportunities for market beating returns. And I think that really highlights you know, the fact that kind of by definition, you need to have a slightly longer term perspective. And that then addresses the near term challenges uh, thematics are facing with rising rates and slowing growth. Uh, yes, that is uh, providing a challenge and a headwind, but at the same time, it's an opportunity uh, to get into what we think are going to be long-run winners at an attractive price. Uh, and to get to brass tacks, the top tips for you, the areas you really have the highest conviction about are China, energy transition, healthcare, and technology. Well, Guy, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of Talking Heads. If you would like more information, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out Viewpoint, our new website for investment insights at viewpoint.bnpparibas-am.com. If you like Talking Heads, leave us a positive review and a nice rating. We recommend subscribing to Talking Heads on your favorite podcast channel. You'll receive your podcast episode every Monday afternoon. You've been listening to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast with me, Daniel Morris, and Guy Davis, Deputy Head of Investments. Please do join me next week. Until then, take care. This presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BNP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the publication date.